meritocracy is disloyalty, and loyalty is nepotism. Uh, these two claims, uh, closely related, are a sort of a little bit of a linguistic twist. And before we go get into them more concretely, I wanted to talk about the sort of ways we look at words and language such that uh, often there are implicit claims in the language that we use and we have ways of framing things such that our perspective looks better or in ways to dismiss other people's perspective. And so what a lot of words do is they lend either legitimacy or delegitimize uh, perspective. So let's take the, uh, a quick example of an excuse or a reason. Generally speaking, the structure of what someone calls an excuse and a reason is roughly the same. The only difference is, is people consider reasons legitimate and they consider excuses not legitimate. So when you offer up something you think is, an, is a reason, one way people are often dismissive of something is saying, oh, that's just an excuse. When in reality, the their sort of logic by saying, oh, that's just an excuse is circular. You are saying it is not legitimate because it's not legitimate. So you could respond to them, no, it's a reason, but that's probably not going to have a lot of traction. Um, so if you're going to dismiss someone's reason uh, yourself, if you have a sort of, uh, if you want to have a little bit more oomph to it, you should have more substantive reasoning than, oh, it's just an excuse. Although some people will uh, take that uh, as face value. Another linguistic sort of, the same sort of analogy or pattern uh, is killing versus murder. Uh, a lot of people think that there are such things as legitimate killings, right? Um, in particular, one that is a lot of people agree with just wars or executions, those sort of things. And they only use the term murder to refer to something that is not considered legitimate. So the structure is, okay, both things are killing of a person. But one is used to say that it's not legitimate, and one is used to say that it's... Killing isn't quite legitimate, it's more neutral than anything. And so, I remember having a discussion with someone that they said a lion wasn't capable of murder. And I thought it was the strangest discussion, because in my mind, um, the distinction is just uh, arbitrary and cultural. Um, and so... If a culture wants to say that a lion's capable of murder and the culture all agrees, then the lion could commit murder. Um, although it would be silly to hold lions to human standards, which was the other person's point, which I think is fair. Um, so back to the original claim. There's this study. Uh, I have it written down here. The name of the study is Large Scale Psychological Differences Within China Explained by Rice Versus Wheat Agriculture. And so, sorry about the car outside. Um, and so, uh, what it does is, generally speaking, uh, wheat agriculture is more individualistic because you don't need as many people working together to, uh, grow wheat. Whereas rice paddy farming, uh, you need to flood the farms at very precise times. Uh, there are huge irrigation efforts. Often it takes hundreds of people to terrace farm, uh, rice paddies correctly depending on the method of rice farming. Um, but it requires a lot more people to work with the water and work together. And so communities that historically have been wheat farmers for hundreds of years are much more individualistic. And communities that are uh, more rice farmers tend to be much more communal. And how this shows up relevant to the first two claims where meritocracy is dis... Uh, is disloyalty and loyalty is nepotism is rice-based societies tend to be way more loyal slash nepotistic and so what the study does is they explain in a very interesting way how just like we give an excuse when we think it's not legitimate and a reason when we think it's legitimate 
you have loyalty and nepotism have the same two-sided coin thing. Whereas if you think a behavior is good and it follows the pattern of giving preferential treatments to friends or family, then we call it loyalty. And if when we want to think of it as bad, then we call it nepotism, right? So there's this sort of implicit judgment in the language you use to refer to things. And so a lot of people, when they say they are valuing loyalty, they are valuing that side of the spectrum where you are um, giving preferential treatment to people who are friends or family. Okay. Wheat-based uh, societies tend to be much more individualistic. And the more individualistic societies will tend to be uh, more disloyal uh, and more meritocratic. And so what you see is the other side of the coin, where if you want to refer to something that is disloyal in a positive way, you would call it meritocratic. Or if you want to look at it in a negative way, you would call it disloyal. And um, this study, if I recall correctly, the study doesn't, I think, I don't think they invoke meritocracy, but meritocracy is the foil that's often given to nepotism, right? So you have uh, meritocracy on one side, nepotism on the other. And so when people invoke that spectrum, what they are trying to do is they are trying to delegitimize uh, valuing friends and family over more performance-based metrics. So when someone invokes the spectrum of meritocracy to disloyalty, they're trying to say that meritocracy is more important. At the same token, when someone invokes the spectrum of loyalty to disloyalty, they're trying to say that the other side is more important. So even the spectrum you use in order to justify the way you're thinking in it is implicitly making a value judgment. So people who talk a lot about loyalty, you can infer that they're probably more communal oriented. And people who talk about uh, a lot more about meritocracy, they're po probably a lot more individualistically oriented. And so I think an interesting thought experiment uh, for these sorts of distinctions is if you have a friend or family member commit a crime, and let's say the crime is killing someone, or if you prefer, murdering someone. Um, do you turn them in? Right? And then you... Obviously, this fits well into the discussion because turning them in is meritocratic in the sense that they will get what they deserve. Right? They broke the rules of society and killed another person or murdered. The same time, it's clearly disloyalty to the friend or family member. And so the way you handle that sort of thought experiment, I think kind of reveals where you are on these spectrums. And being able to think about, um, obviously if you protect your family member, you're more into loyalty and nepotism, right? But I think that having a handle on thinking of um, these two as having a good side of the coin and a bad side of the coin allows you to be a lot more dynamic when talking to people who are invoking either loyalty or meritocracy. Because if you if you have a high fidelity to meritocracy, you're going to have a low fidelity to loyalty, right? Just by the nature of things, where uh, you are less likely to give preferential treatments to friends and family uh, if they're not deserving of preferential treatment, right? If they act out of line, you're more likely to treat them poorly because uh, that's what they would deserve. And, you know, same for the other token, the other side. And a lot of times when people are having discussions, I feel that they kind of talk past each other with their reasoning where one side will be talking meritocracy, the other side will be talking loyalty. And they don't realize that they are talking about a, a similar sort of pattern and they generally speaking also don't realize the the darker side of what they're um, perhaps advocating for where someone who is advocating for loyalty they're also advocating for nepotism and someone who's advocating for meritocracy is also advocating for disloyalty um, I 
the the study is tremendously interesting. Um, I'm not going to go into it on depth in this video, but I'll just repeat it uh, for the sake of anyone who's interested in it. And I might be able to find a link to it. Um, it's I mean you you'll have to pay for it or whatever it is. But uh, it's called large scale psychological differences within China explained by rice versus wheat agriculture. And it's very important that the, the study was done within China rather than rice versus wheat somewhere else outside of China. Um, but one of the inferences drawn by the study is, or one of the points is, uh, Western culture tends to be a lot more individualistic um, than Eastern culture. And what the study in part argues is that is due to um, them being a wheat-based agrarian societies in general relative to rice, uh, which is grown in the East. Um, but it's important that the study is done within China because that way East versus West is not a confounding variable. If you can show that people are more individualistic within the same nation uh, based on what their communities have grown over hundreds of years, then you can... Uh, it's much better than showing that they're more individualistic <laughs> halfway across the globe, right? So that study's interesting. As far as discussion goes, does anyone have any sort of, um, any sort of uh, word pairs where one is the legitimate version and the other is the illegitimate version, right? So excuse versus reason, murder versus killing, um, and would like to share. If you like this video, uh, feel free to give it a like. If you want more content uh, that's in this vein, uh, feel free to subscribe and have a good one.